No doubt you've heard of the Israel and Hamas conflict going on right now. It's everywhere in the news. Everyone's talking about it. On October 7th, Hamas kidnapped and killed tons of civilians, starting what is now a real war. That was the highest number of Jews, by the way, killed in a single day since the Holocaust. After this, some people were very quick to support Hamas and the Palestinian liberation movements, despite the violence. But lots of people were quick to support Israel as well and defend the Jewish homeland. But there's one question that I see nobody really addressing all that much. Who exactly are the good guys? This can happen anywhere, of course, but especially in the West, people are begging for our attention all the time and begging for us to choose a side in everything from soda brands to wars in other countries. And the war in Israel is no different. Either you're a Hamas supporter who thinks Israelis are the bad guys, or you're an Israel supporter who thinks Hamas are the bad guys. Clearly, killing innocent civilians is the wrong thing to do, but Israel hasn't exactly made it easy for the Palestinians over the years. They have policies in place that make it impossible for the Palestinians to achieve their liberation in a peaceful way, so they're left with the choice of either going painfully along with what Israel wants, or acting out violently, and now you have violence. So now Hamas is threatening not only Israel with these large attacks that makes Israel enraged, but they're threatening their own people because if Israel's going to fight back, Gaza is such a small area with so many people in it, innocent people are just going to get killed all over the place. And now that's what you see. As Christians, we're told to be in the world, but not a part of the world. We're told to remember that all of this is going to come to an end someday. We believe that God will raise people from the dead after they've passed away from this life, but for us that are still breathing, that hasn't happened yet. And Jesus told us to be as wise as snakes, but as harmless as doves. Now that doesn't mean that we're suddenly a doormat, of course, but as Paul said, as far as it depends on you, be at peace with everyone. So knowing that we're supposed to be harmless and peaceful as far as it depends on us, what do we do when war breaks out in the most politically explosive part of the world? Well, everybody else says, pick a side. The truth is that on either side, there are no good guys, only bad guys. No matter who you are, we should condemn the atrocities and remember the sinful nature of humanity. Resist the pressure to join a side. Muslims would find it natural to support Palestinians, and Christians would find it natural to support Jews. But no one should look at the situation as if they have the authority to condemn one people and pardon another. We know the Bible says that no one is good but God, but do we actually live as if that's true? Let me give you an illustration. Imagine a couple of boys get into a fight in a playground. Some of the girls come over and try to break up the fight. When asked why the boys should listen to them, the girls say, well, because we said so, or else. I don't know any young boy that would listen to that. But if a parent or a teacher comes over and demands that they stop, or they'll be put in time out, suddenly you have peace. We and all the other humans around the globe are like the children. How can one of us condemn another? What authority do we have? Instead, we look to God, who was called our father for his authority. And then we have peace. On the pressure from Christians to support Israel blindly, I'll say this. It's based largely on popular end times theories. To a Christian people who, based on their end times views, see a complete conversion of Israel as an absolute requirement for Christ returning to earth, any attack on Israel is pretty much an attack on Christ. But the desire to see the end times things fulfilled should be put aside for other things. Eschatology is the study of the end times, but it shouldn't be put in front of soteriology, which is the study of salvation in religion. As my friend Dr. Ant Greenham says, we can't let the eschatological tail wag the soteriological dog. What he means by that is that we can't let our views of the end times take precedence over our desire to see other people be saved. Christians can look to Jesus for an idea of what to do here. In his time, it wasn't exactly easy being a Jew, and tensions were high between the Roman authorities and the Jewish authorities. But instead of thinking about political things or trying to worry about fixing the world as it was, what did he tell his followers to do? Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
Now that everyone has an opinion on the war in Israel, it's not going to be hard to find a conversation about it. What will be hard is not choosing a side, especially when you're talking with people that you know and trust. Keep in mind that the grace of God is extended to anyone, whether Muslim, Jew, Palestinian, or otherwise, and that the Great War isn't between Muslims and Jews, or really humans and other humans at all for that matter. The Great War is between God and the forces of evil, and he's already won. Anyone who believes in Jesus and claims him as their Lord immediately joins the winning team. Don't forget that.